Good afternoon, KHM agents. Welcome to KHM Today, your weekly go-to resource for industry news and straight up fun. I am your host, Carolyn Orff, and it is September 15th, and I am so happy to be back with you this week. Last week was weird. Whenever I'm not here, I feel like, like something's missing. So all day I was kind of like, am I supposed to be doing something? So I'm just happy to be back with you guys, and we have a lot to share with you today. Um, let's start with the fact that today is National Linguini Day. I know it's a crazy holiday, but does anyone know what linguini means? I'll give you a minute to think. Not a full minute. It means little tongues. And it's, I know it's kind of gross, but it's like flat pasta. So you ever notice the shape? To me, it all tastes the same, but this is long and flat. So there you go. Trivia for the day. But I'd love it if you guys put in the Q&A or the chat box, if you have some favorite recipes or favorite things that you love to eat with linguine, I'd love to hear them because I'm always interested in what everyone else is making for dinner. So love it. Anyway, so we're going to hear from our guests today to see what else um, they love their linguine with. Um, we were expecting to have Luca Orlandi on today from Rome, but he had a family um, situation that he had to deal with. So we are going to have him on another week, but we wish... Uh, Luca and his family well. Um, before we get started with our guests, though, I want to talk about something that I found out this week that is, to me, was so fascinating. So there was an agent um, from KHM that was dealing with some clients and the river cruising in Europe and the changes in protocol for the Netherlands. And this kind of threw everyone through a loop at the last minute because it was like, get out of the country as fast as you can. So the river cruise lines especially were trying to reroute and move people around and post trip extensions and things like that. Well, thankfully this agent posted on Facebook because it got me thinking about a client of mine who I'm just doing the land for uh, while she's on her river cruise, so pre and post. And I was digging and digging and digging and trying to find out what are the protocols for people getting off these river cruise ships. And I thought I found my answer and I spoke with the river cruise ship and they were kind of, you know, not totally sure, but thought there was an exemption because this client was going to be on a ship for more than 14 days. So you guys, here's a little tip. The government of the Netherlands, actually, you can WhatsApp them with your question. So if you go to their website, there's different ways you can contact them. This is the first time I'd ever seen a government with a WhatsApp. And I actually did it. I did it last Thursday and I got a response on Monday. So now I can pass that response off to my client. It's on the screen and then they know that they're in the clear, at least for now. So I just thought that was cool. So as you're going through different, um, uh, sorry, Lawrence just popped on here. As you're going through different things, be sure to look for that. Um, because you never know what countries are going to end up having easier forms of communication than picking up the phone or reading what's on the website. Um, okay, so we see that Lawrence is on. He is our special guest today, and we're so excited to, to have him here. Lawrence, welcome to the show. Lawrence is live from the Scarlet Lady, which is docked in Manhattan. And I have to put on like my hat because I don't know about you guys, but everything I've read about the Scarlet Lady kind of is like, I don't know, very adult. So Lawrence, are you there? You were just there one minute ago. I am here. I am here. Do you see me? No. Well, okay. It says webcam closed by organizer. So okay. it's up to you to let me in. Robbie's going to send your request in just a second for you to click on. Hey. But while we're waiting for that, oh, there he is. All right. Yay. Hi. Live from the Scarlet Lady. Okay. Yes. We should mention, Lawrence, that you are our East Coast and Mid Atlantic Regional Coordinator. How many K Gym agents are on board today? Have you been able to meet up with any? I did. We, we, I think it's about 20 of us on here. Awesome. So, yes. what, what is, what's in store for the day? What's the goal for the event? This is very unusual because hello everybody, good to see you. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out with this phone where the uh, this iPad where to look. Um, it's really interesting because this is unlike most ship inspections. I mean, they really have pulled out all the stops. They have the regular shows, they have the games, so they've kind of compressed a full cruise into one day. It's amazing. 
So when you say these opportunities are available to you, what sort of things have you experienced? And based on those experiences, who do you think is the clientele for that? This We know that it's adult only, but is it a this specific is, kind of adult that's going to love this? That's a great question, Carolyn. And, and what's unique about uh, Virgin Voyages is that's not a question that can be easily answered because I've never seen a ship like this. Really? I mean, it's totally, yes. So think Studio 54, uh, for those of you old enough to remember that. Think um, South Beach, think Ibiza, you know what I mean? So we've never, this ship was not designed by a cruise ship designer. So you think like bachelors, you think, single ladies, couples, you know, maybe, but very lively crowd. This is not a, um, you know, this it's different. Yeah. And I okay. like it. Adults so you only. Bring, you bring up a very good point, and we were having a good chuckle about this before we came on the show. All right, the bedding in these staterooms. You've, I'm guessing mm -hmm. they've got doors open, so you can check this out. Yes, we've been going into is, the beds are supposed to convert like how many different ways? Well, it's interesting because if think of L, so if you're a couple, it's no problem. If you're right, if right, your roommate, then there. it's like a L, right? So okay. you'll either be head to head or foot to head if you have to have separation. Some people don't care. They'll just if it's too Ladies, they might be like, okay, we're girlfriends. We just stay in the same bed. So it's kind of, unless you get a suite. And then they have a, also a very unique uh, called a social interior, which is like four bunk beds, which is really interesting, right? So if you have four friends, y'all want to just go and have, have a party, a nice five night cruise, you know, you just look, all we're going to do is sleep in the room. You could do that. Very interesting. Okay, I'm going to need more information because we were laughing about the fact that, you know, someone said, oh, there's seven ways you can configure the bed. And I thought, why do you need seven ways? You need two ways, this and this. Like, <laughs> let's no, not no, it this. no, it doesn't go like that. It's either this or this. That, yeah. Okay. Know, right? <laughs> so it's either a and L, right? So, um, but again, you know, it's because the whole ship, the layout, when you come on, it's very interesting. You'll see, we'll be posting pictures, okay? right? Okay. A lot of us are posting pictures, but what really blows me away that I really, really like is the international flair of the staff. I've never seen such a diverse staff. South Africa, Australia, England, Portugal, Brazil. I mean, it's amazing. Never have I seen that. This seems like it's been a really long haul for Virgin Voyages. Right. Is that is that haul kind of reflected in their excitement today? Oh, I don't know. Any any anxiety, angst, or anything you can't tell. But right? they're just pure joy, right? After all, everybody this time, is really like, po oh. everybody is very positive. Um, because I don't know how many agents are on here, but you you feel the spaciousness of it you know i really would say check out especially the post i mean you can look at the virgin website that's great but for k gemmers look on the facebook pages from the regional or the agents only page and look at the pictures that we all are posting in the videos because it'll really kind of give you a good feel for what it is um, but I'm so great. Let, let me just say this. Y'all know this is why Carolyn doesn't have me on, y'all, because I talk a lot. But listen, <laughs> the thing that is amazing to me, again, and I say this not because I'm affiliated with KHM, but we have the best agents in the world. I mean, it's it's just amazing. It's like when we meet, it's like we've known each other all our lives. I don't care where they're from or whatever. We just have a good time. See, now that statement right there is why you should be on every week, Lawrence. I love those sort of sentiments. Yeah, no, it's it's, it's, it's really amazing. So they, uh, I haven't, I've done the state rooms. We had lunch together. We just did photo ops outside on the deck. Now I'll try to catch a show or two in a game show. 
than I've done it. So it's action packed. I've never been on a launch like this. Since it's National Linguini Day, did you have linguini for lunch or did you have something else that was delicious? You want to know what I had? I had yeah. filet mignon. I had filet mignon and I had, what did I eat? Keisha gave me half of her lettuce with bacon and blue cheese and <laughs> I didn't have any dessert. That was good. No, we got red <laughs> salad, right. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have any dessert. You'd be proud of me. I feel like the true testament of great food on a cruise ship is their filet. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you had that. How much time do we have? Cause I'd like to take a chance and walk you around. If you um, want. Well, we don't have much longer, but I would like to know where you are. I am in like a multi-purpose room. Let me show you. Because I had to get somewhere where I could get the internet. So this is like a multi-purpose room that you can, I guess, rent out if you want, right? And I'm walking around without a mask on, which is a no-no, but that's all right. Nobody will know. And see, this is another little area. So you see the decor. Can you see that? Yeah. So it's got like a very, very mod. Yeah, kind of Austin Powers, modish kind of thing, right? But the outdoor spaces are amazing. But I was running around trying to get on the online and I had to ask the VIP people to give me VIP access. So they did. So you have a clear picture. But awesome. I would love to show you something else. But I know y'all throwing me off. See that? Bill Coyle, you have to bring me on your live one time because you don't cut me off. But I have my <laughs> man. No, I'm just kidding. I know you well, have a Lawrence, lot to cover. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much. It's so fun when we're able to go live to things like this because not everyone has the opportunity to go. So to be able to see it and hear your experiences is great. And I know this has been highly anticipated. So I'm glad that it's meeting and probably exceeding your expectations today. So oh, enjoy the rest and of the Scarlet Lady. I will. And I'm going to go put all my correct stuff so that I'm ready. <laughs> and then what we can do is just go to, to agent only or come to the KHM East Region or Mid Atlantic, and you'll see a lots of pictures, y'all. Carolyn, always the best. I'm glad we could do this. Thanks, Lawrence. Tell everyone hello from us. All right, Scarlet Lady, book your tick cabins. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh my gosh, he's the best. I just adore him. He's so fun to to have on the show. All right, so before we get started with our first guest, we do have something else to share with you. So. I have been with KHM Travel Group for about a year and a half, and I have to share with you guys that that day in and day out, I'm overwhelmed by the kindness and generosity of the entire team. And um, so I want to invite you guys, this Saturday is National um, Cleanup Day, and KHM Cares, the um, the warm, fuzzy part of, of KHM Travel Group, is participating in three cleanup days. Our producer, Robbie, is going to put those cleanup days in the chat box for you guys, those of you that are in the local local Cleveland, Ohio area. But if you're not, there's still an opportunity for you to participate um, by going to nationalcleanup.org. And so you can um, sign up and join one that's already in, in progress, or you can start your own cleanup project. So this is a way to um, uh, show awareness and um, to shed a light on on litter and how we can all all just clean up our roads and our streets and our areas a little bit better than we're doing. So um, if you do participate, make sure you post your pictures on social media and um, we would love to see agents out there participating. I'll be participating this weekend with my family in a different kind of cleanup project. We're going to be doing some cleanup for my son's Eagle Scout project that we're all excited to start this weekend. So we'll be painting, fixing, cleaning up um, on campus of, of uh, the school that he went to for 11 years. So that is our contribution to National Cleanup Day. Anyways, let's get started with a great show. Uh, before the show becomes two hours in length, please welcome Tim Smith from KHM Travel Group. Hi, Tim. Hey, there she is. All right, looking good. How are you today? Well, you I'm some? I'm ready to cook some linguine. <laughs> Do you have it on the menu for tonight? No, I don't, but I did find a, a, a recipe for making it that I sent to you that you could share with everybody. All right, where did you send it? Did you send it to my email? Yeah, I sent it to your email. Okay, well, we'll have to share it at another time. We can't share well, it on the show live, but we can send it out. Some, 
you had said something about uh, tie your talk in with Laguini. And I'm like, <laughs> so there you have it. <laughs> all right. Uh, so I looked at how to make it and uh, I call it cooking with Tim, Laguini, making Laguini and fish. Excellent. All right. So you are really great at finding creative ways to implement uh, sales tactics for those of us that aren't really good at that whole outreach process with our clients. So you believe we should feed the fish regularly to benefit our business. So what does this mean? Well, I have to tell you, I got this from my son. I've been doing it my whole entire life, but I never had a title for it. And uh, he's uh, probably the best networker, you know, co conversation starter that I've ever met. And um, he was eating with us, came in from New York and he was eating with us one night. And then after dinner, we talked and then he said, well, I got to go feed the fish. And then he left and he went out on the uh, driveway and got on his phone and then he was gone for about 45 minutes. So I thought, OK, what the heck are you doing, man? And so later he came in and I said, what were you doing? And he goes, well, I was feeding the fish. And I goes, what's it mean? And he goes, well, I call every I call people five to seven people every night, uh, contacts, prospects, all kinds of people. And I just touch base with them uh, for about 45 minutes. And I said, you talked to him for 45 minutes? No, 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 no. He said, I talked to him for five minutes. And he said, if it's voicemail, it's even better because then I can just leave him a quick uh, message. And uh, so I picked up on this feeding the fish idea. And I work with the city of Brunswick. I've uh, been uh, involved in economic development with them. And uh, I was talking to staff one day and I brought in a, t a fishing tank uh, with fish. And I said, you know, how often do you feed the fish? Like once a year? And they're like, no, they would die. And I said, oh, well, then once a month, right? And they go, no, they would still die. I said, well, how often? Every day. And uh, so I always encourage people that are in business to be feeding the fish. And really that is, it's just, you know, getting on the phone or emailing, you know, once a day, five new people and uh, a couple of rules. I, when I do this, let's say I'll do it from like six to seven o'clock at night. Um, I'll call five to seven people. I'll talk to them from anywhere from two minutes to maybe five minutes. And uh, if I get their voicemail, even better, because then I can just leave them a real right. quick message, but I've reached out and, and I've touched them. And um, I usually try to have some sort of a fun fact for them. I, a lot of times I don't even call them anything about business. You know, I just say, hey, you know, wasn't it great that uh, the Browns almost, almost won the game this week? <laughs> they came, this close. <laughs> So this is a really interesting point because as you're as you're sharing this and you're you're saying I pick up the phone and I do this or I send an email, I think about the fact that those are two things right now that people in this day and age we're kind of tired of. You know, the phone, I mean, I don't know about you, but my cell phone gets nonstop spam calls now. Um, my email is is flooded. So taking it to a different level and not making it business related kind of helps that it helps someone listen to that message and say oh he's not just trying to sell me something he's just trying to touch base but i think we could also say we're feeding the fish by doing the same sort of thing on social media would you agree with that well i 100 percent agree in fact you touched a nerve that i forgot about um i've tended to do more and more texting uh, i never used to do very much texting and i find out people don't want to talk to me as much or read my emails as much, but if I send them a text, they they yeah. tend to respond to that because it's so quick, so easy, you can do it anytime. And so I'll see a news article I think they might be interested in, or I see uh, some event that, uh, like say a chamber meeting's coming up and I'll, I'll send them a text and say, oh, by the way, you know, looking forward to seeing you at the chamber meeting next week. And it's reminding them to come, which they definitely appreciate. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it's a non-business contact, you know, where I'm not just trying to sell them something. I'm keeping it informed on what's going on. Well, and this whole idea of feed the fish lends itself so perfectly to the idea that each client communicates in their own way. And so what works for one client might not work the best for another. So you might pick up the phone to talk to one and posting on social media or sending them a quick Facebook message or text might work, be might work better for them so right. it really is universal it just depends on what works best for your client and the other thing that you brought up that's really good is uh khm is really good at showing people how to do all this stuff and we have webinars and things i have 
tons of things uh, that I do during my talks, uh, the sales animal. And um, those are the types of things that you can really uh, touch base with people, talk to a large amount of people in a very short period of time. And before I finish, I just, I've worked with hundreds of organizations across the United States. And KHM has really one of the best staff and teams of people that I've ever worked with in my whole entire life. I can't believe at this late of my career, I get to work with wonderful people and these agents get to work with such wonderful people. Uh, so I, I just wanted to put that plug in there for uh, KHM. Tim, thank you so much for being here. It's always so thought provoking. And, you know, I, I all I had written down today was this is what I need to say to introduce him, because I feel like it's just such an easy conversation with you because I don't know, I feel like we get each other. <laughs> That's for sure. So feed those <laughs> fish every day. Feed those fish. Thank you so all much. Right. Enjoy your linguine tonight. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> All right, you guys. So I'm excited to welcome Virginia Ambushami from the education team here back to whatever those words are, KHF today. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. And we should say, I apologize before you before you say another word, we need to make sure that we know that Tim's segment is sponsored by Disney Destinations. And I'm so excited because in another two weeks, they start their 50th magical years of celebration in October. And your segment this week is sponsored by our friends at Southwest Vacations and United Vacations, two of our favorite ALG brands. So there you go. See, I get so excited <laughs> that these things just like slip my brain. It doesn't even matter that they're in bold, like 22 prints on the piece of paper in front of me. <laughs> well, thanks for being here. Thank you, Carolyn, for having me. So you are someone who tends to do the unusual and the unexpected. Um, when you call me and tell me what you've booked, sometimes I'm like, you did what? I mean, it, you really kind of <laughs> run the gamut. So when you told me, and you love to travel with companies like Abercrombie and Kent and Oceana. So when you told me you were going to hop on an Amtrak vacation and travel from Seattle to Chicago, to say I was surprised is really downplaying it. So I remember the look on your face. <laughs> so I thought, oh my gosh, someone must be paying her to do this because it just wasn't, it's, it's not something that I, I would have ever guessed that you would do on your own. So let's start with kind of the why behind it all, because there's a great okay. why. Let me say, first of all, they weren't paying my way. We paid our <laughs> way. <laughs> there was no sponsorship here. Um, we made this trip because my husband and I lived in a motor home for five years and we went all over the country. And we had visited 49 states. We were missing one and that was North Dakota. So I was looking for a creative way. Can you hear that? We have nope. the yard people outside and <laughs> all of a sudden they're under my window. Um, Anyway, we were looking for a creative way to visit North Dakota. We didn't really want to do a driving vacation because I really hate driving vacations. So this was our creative way to go to North Dakota. We went all the way across the state. We ate meals in North Dakota. We uh, slept in North Dakota. We were just moving the whole time. Okay. so. What surprised you most about your Am Amtrak vacation? Well, I'm going to start with the company itself. I was su pleasantly surprised with how easy it was to work with them to get this set up. And I was also pleasantly surprised with the product. We were able to book three nights in Seattle, the train trip, and three nights in Chicago. It included tours in Seattle and um, different, oh, the, what, um, shoot, the city pass in Seattle and Chicago. We had a hop on, hop off bus in Chicago. And all this was included as part of the vacation package. There was some selection in hotels. They didn't have everything. They didn't have the one I wanted for Chicago, but the one we had was the Palmer House, 
which is a very nice hotel. So I was pleased with that selection. As far as the train part of it, the things that surprised me, it's really a relaxing way to take a trip across the country if you have two days. We left Seattle, we were going along the coast, we saw the majestic princess out in the water. Um, we were sitting, getting ready for dinner as we turned into the Cascade Mountains and we were just watching the Cascade Mountains go by as we were eating dinner. We were trying to take pictures out the window while we were eating because, I mean, the scenery was just gorgeous. Another thing that very much surprised me was the food. If you're in a roomette or a bedroom, the meals are included, and that's three meals a day. That's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So we had six meals on the train, and I was we were all very pleasantly surprised about the food. It was very good. The service was good. Uh, the service people, the wait staff are very friendly. And it was just a fun experience. So if you're not sitting at a meal, are you sitting in your room or is there another lounge to sit in? There are, uh, a, there is a lounge car. There's at least one. Uh, we didn't explore to see if there was more than one. We did not go down into the bottom. It's a double decker. The bar part is in the bottom. The lounge part is on top. Um, you do have to wear a mask if you're in the coach car, on your way to the dining car, or in the lounge car. So we didn't spend a lot of time in the lounge car. Plus, it was usually occupied. And when I say occupied, I'm going to say that loosely because people were supposed to be doing social dis distancing, so they weren't crowding in. So there were four of us, and it was hard to find a place for the four of us to sit okay. together. So we spent most of our time in our rooms, or we would linger over dinner. They would pretty much have to kick us out of the dining room. <laughs> What was something that was unexpected about this trip that you weren't expecting to experience? Um, the rails for this trip are the regular freight train rails. They're not the smoothest in the world by any means. So it was, I think if you're a cruiser, think about very rough seas. When you're trying to walk down the hall, and you're going this way and this way. <laughs> well, that was happening to us on the train. Whenever you're walking down the hall, roomettes are these smaller rooms on either side of a hall, center hall, room on either side. You can close the door or you can close a curtain. Well, most people would just close their curtain for the air circulation. So you're walking down the hall like this. <laughs> and all of a sudden there's a jolt and you go to brace yourself against the wall. Well, guess what? It's a curtain. I almost <laughs> made a new friend on my way to dinner because there, it, it was just, we weren't expecting that. We weren't expecting it to be quite as rough as it was. And my husband and uh, the man and the other couple that was with us both said something that they experienced that, I don't know, I tuned out was every time the train crosses an, a road, every time there's an intersection with a road, the train blows its horn. Well, from Seattle to Chicago, there are a lot of roads. <laughs> and so it was constantly blowing that warning. I mean, it's a certain number, uh, and my husband can imitate it because he <laughs> listens to it so much. But that happened a lot. I mean, all night, all day, and I tuned it out, but both of them talked about how that, that was just something that kind of got on their nerves after a while. So at the end of the day, would you do it again? I would. I would do it again. Um, the other couple that was with us said, no, been there, done that. That was enough, but um, I would do it again. We joked, though, 
we said, well, if we do this again, we want two bedrooms instead of just one so that <laughs> neither one of us has to try to climb into the top bunk. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have painted such a good picture for us because I will tell you, I took the train once in a, a room like you had and I took it from Chicago to Denver. And my experience was not quite as lovely, but I have a feeling that had to do with the fact that I was like 15 years old and with my dad and my brother. So it wasn't quite the same vibe as two couples going, <laughs> you know, just hanging out and enjoying the food and the experience. So, you know, I, I think that might have had something to do with it. So after I our probably teacher, do. feel like maybe I would do this. I think it can be fun. I mean, you don't know unless you, you try it. Um, we had done overnight trips on the train in Europe. I will say the cabin on Amtrak is bigger than the cabin in Europe. The, the one in Europe was a totally different experience uh, that I won't go into now. We can talk about that some other time, but uh, the, the cabin on Amtrak is roomier especially since you're in it for so much time. You, we could take our mask off when we were in the cabins. So mm -hmm. we really spent more time there. And you could relax, you could prop your feet up. Your bathroom is right there in the bedroom cabin with you. Um, wasn't bad at all. Good way to go across awesome. the country. That's great. Okay, you're going to stay on for our next segment as well. Thank you so much for your thoughts on that. I think that's something that agents have been questioning. Some people have been booking. They're a little unsure as to the experience. Um, so totally oh, valuable. Let, let me add one thing. Yeah. The commission paid very, very quickly, which surprised me. So that's important to us agents. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, you guys. Um, our next, our next guest. Where's Wanda? We're missing Wanda. Um, I have to laugh because is. you told us to wait to hit the button, and Marie and I just hit the button the second it came up. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I said no. I'm like, oh, it's time to hit the button. Like, oh, always <laughs> follows directions in this group. I, the app is following you. <laughs> you thought Lawrence was trouble today. Let me tell you, you've got the <laughs> troublemakers now. So funny. So you guys, there are so many, you know, let me just say before I even give an intro, I'm just going to say this segment is sponsored by Regent Seven Seas because I know I'm going to forget the ultra luxury, all inclusive cruise line that I know so many of us love. So we've been doing for a couple of weeks, um, this best training series where we've kind of been breaking down events from our favorite online trainings to our favorite European trainings. And this week we're going to break down some of those industry events because there are so many and it's really hard, I think, for agents to decipher which ones um, have are the best value and give them the best return on investment. So please welcome Virginia Ann from Education Team, Bill Coyle, Director of Education and Programs, Marie Smith from the Groups Team, and Wanda Thomas, our new team member for the Education Team, making Yay. her second, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Debut. <laughs> Appearance. Yeah, debut. Appearance. <laughs> I'm all tongue-tied today. <laughs> so thanks so much for being here today, guys. And this is Marie's first time on the show. It That's is. crazy. Wow. <laughs> so we, there are so many choices out there. So let's start with, with two of the fan favorites, right? The ones for the cruise industry, Cruise 360 and Cruise World. Um, Marie, I know you've been to both. Do you mind just sharing real quick? What's the difference between these two and who might enjoy either one of these? Well, I mean, they're both heavily cruise focused. So if you're a cruise agent, this is definitely where you need to be. Um, you know, my very first experience with cruise lines was Cruise World. Um, I did not step foot on a ship until 2012, my first experience uh, at Cruise World. Uh, Cruise World is ran by Travel Weekly, which is owned by North Star. So it's, you know, it's a publication that's putting it on. Whereas Cruise 360 is operated by CLIA, which is our Cruise Line Industry Association. So you may get more, you know, insider tips of what's happening in the Cruise World on 
a associations view when you do CLIA 360. Um, but you know, Cruise World is there, and you may find you know they both give great education. Uh, you may get more salesy type things for products at a Cruise World because it is like a media sponsored type program. But they also have the Star program, which new agents looking to get out to an event they want to get to Cruise World. Maybe you don't have it in your finances. Maybe apply for the Star program to see if you know that is you know, the like VIP agent um, program for them where you can set up your appointments with suppliers to meet different people from different cruise lines or even different products that are, are, are being shown. Um, and you get some VIP treatment as well as your fees covered. So you have that there as well, which we don't really see that much on the, the CLIA side. Um, CLIA also, you know, will rotate between Fort Lauderdale, Seattle, and Vancouver. So you get the uh, you know the Caribbean product, you get the Alaskan product. So that switches on a uh, on a year basis as well. Whereas Cruise World tends to always be in Fort Lauderdale. Bill, anything to add there? Because I know you have attended both. Yeah, you know, it was funny. The first time I went to uh, a Cruise 360, it wasn't even called that back in the late 90s. Um, I'm sitting in on this class. I'm like, what am I going to learn in this class? And then the speaker got up there and said, does anyone know uh, this word? And it was Chivitavecchia, right? And I'm thinking, I have no idea what that word is. I don't know where that <laughs> word is. I don't know anything about that. And I thought, I'm learning how to pronounce Chivitavecchia. And it was that made me think, you know what, you don't know everything, right? So yeah. the idea that said that I was going to learn hands-on learning about ports, product destinations, uh, spe specifics on ships, I thought this was the greatest thing for me. And then earning the certificates was really something that was really important, earning up to what Marie, the ACC or any one of those um, levels that you can earn with CLIA, I thought was very good. I have not been to a cruise world and it's good because my colleagues have, I haven't been there, but I, I really love Cruise 360 from that standpoint. I think you um, have said what I say every day in the morning to myself, you don't know it all. Yes. Absolutely, I say that. That I feel is like how I have to start my day. So, and and with and I say that like with love. It's not like a a you know. You, so you have to cross your eyes and dot your t's. You have to look at everything. Um, my favorite part, and I have never been to these events, but I've done ship inspections, and I can't even imagine the number that you're able to do at one event because of the destinations that you're in. That's just gotta be incredible. Although I always wanna cry when I get off any ship. So I can't even imagine doing like seven and not stowing away on one of them. I yeah, learned I so much. Hosting. Sorry, Marie, I learned so much at a ship inspection once. Um, I won't mention any names. It was a smaller ship that only did a three night sailing and it was still when smoking was going on. And I thought, oh my gosh, we walked on to do the site inspection and there was sm the smoke was still lingering from the night before. And I thought, <laughs> okay, I know a product I'm probably not gonna sell or let my clients know. So it, those, daily, those daily attributes are really, really important just to get on there and experience those. We had lunch on one of the vessels, you know, you did something else on another vessel. So you're just learning really quick some of the things that you're probably going to not like about those or really fall in love with right yeah you have to make sure that you're giving enough pre and post time because you know the event itself takes a few days and then you have the pre or post where you can you know choose I think the most you can do in one day is one just because it's a get on get off and just embarking a ship like you're doing this much to get me off ship inspection just let me cruise you know mm -hmm. it's <laughs> one of those yep. things but it, it's amazing I think I I think I got three or four under my belt for my first cruise yep. world, which was massive for oh, me because I uh, I was an all-inclusive yeah it was it was amazing that's great okay so let's switch gears to um, supplier focused um, events ALG puts on Ascend it used to be called Summit we've got uh, Delta Vacations University that has happened um, there's other in-destination uh, events that happen with suppliers. Virginia, what is your thought on ALG Ascend? I know you've been several times, both when it was Summit and, and as Ascend. I think that that's a wonderful opportunity if you want to learn about ALG brands and ALG destinations. If your focus is outside of that, there may be something else that would work a little better for you, but I don't think you can get any better for the ALG brands. They really put on 
a good trade show. Uh, they have great speakers, very inspirational type speakers. And they celebrate you as the agent. In a lot of cases now, I think with the SIN, you have to be invited. So you have to sell the brand. Um, I remember one session that I went to, I tend to focus on the business sessions more than the destination sessions. And there was one to teach you how to read the reports that you get from ALG, which I know a lot of people get those reports and they look at them and they go, okay, this is a bunch of numbers and close them up and don't really want to look at them. So I, I thought that that was an excellent way to learn how to read your reports, know, understand what they're telling you and use them to improve your business. I, I would agree with you there. And what I loved about that event was that it, if you were feeling down about your business or just down in general, wondering if you should stay in it, it was like just a party for you. It mm -hmm. was, it was celebratory. It was thankful. It really made you feel good about the work and the time and the effort that you were putting into your business every single day. Yeah. And I know when we were going through rehearsal yesterday, Marie brought up about that's the only place that, uh, She'll get up really early in the morning to go to yoga. <laughs> hey, wellness is really important. And it's, it's really awesome to see the effort they put forth into helping you, you yep. know, take care of yourself. Wanda, have you attended Delta Vacations University? I have not. I've heard wonderful things about it, but I have not. Each time I um, intend to attend, um, something comes up at that same window of date. So I have not been there as of yet. What is your what what event have you attended that's been your favorite? Uh, probably the 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 uh, Cruise 360 was probably one of the ones that I really enjoyed. Um, I thought it was uh, very educational. Uh, met a lot of different travel agents that we got to share a lot of different knowledge. Like there was one young lady there that was um, into every Disney cruise ship and knew everything about it and was able to share that that knowledge, uh, which was great. Um, and then from a educational standpoint, it really was awesome because, for instance, one of the sessions I went to talk to you about doing groups. And there was actually a spreadsheet that the um, presenter presented on how to calculate the cost um, that you don't want to forget certain items um, when you're estimating how much a group's going to cost. Of course, you get what you get the quote for the ship itself. But don't forget, if you're doing all these ancillary items, don't forget to add those additional pieces in, et cetera. So um, definitely Cruise 360 was, was really one of my favorite. I love the classes, the sessions. They also had a a social media class that was very, very enlightening on the different things that you uh, do for social media posting, et cetera. What, what really is a boost? What really is doing mm -hmm. ads? So forth and so on. So it was really great. Really great. Very cool. Um, so let's go back to Delta Vacations University because when Virginia spoke about ALG Ascend, she said, this is such a great thing for those that are focused on ALG brands. And when it comes to Delta Vacations University, I have not been to this event but the buzz around the world is that it's great mm -hmm. and that it really is fantastic for everyone even if you are not in a delta vacations market why is that bill well and i know marie wants to chime in on that but um first of all i just want to go back to something wanda said can you imagine going to cruise 360 not expecting to learn a thing about a disney ship and learn a thing about and learn something about all the disney ships just from having a conversation from someone yeah. i mean that's, that's what's cool that's about awesome. all these yeah. events right and you know mm -hmm. carolyn we obviously like to promote our khm events boot camps etc but um and i think marie would agree with me when we go to delta u we are put into these um, classroom style situations with what Marie 40 or 50 other agents right oh, because yeah. a, there's a thousand agents a day over a two-day period eating breakfast lunch and dinner together and then you're going to all your classes you know you you choose your classes when you have to be really really cognizant about choosing something that you ha you don't know something about right and you really want to delve into it and learn and I'll never forget before I had ever been to Italy I went to an Italy class and now keep in mind that everyone that's doing the instruction at Delta U is a representative from the company who's just been there right so they were just there they were escorted or they were on some type of an independent trip and they've got all kinds of great notes and tidbits for you i learned more about just rome florence and venice in that 
short period of time than I'd ever learned in my life, right? It was just amazing to hear all these great things. And for me, it helped me connect so that I knew I knew I'd feel more comfortable selling it now. And that's what I do for all of those different classes. You know, I'll be honest with you. There are certain conventions that I go to that I don't necessarily attend all the classes. At Delta U, I don't miss a class because yeah. you've chosen them. There's something geared for you. And there's business classes, social media classes, et cetera. But <clears throat> that's what I love about Delta U. Yeah, Delta Sorry. Vacations, that that what they do, what they what they get together is very heavily focused on destination. Um, and what the takeaways from each class, you get a, a great takeaway, like notes in the in the presentation is one thing, but you also get that takeaway, which I love. We always have a force at Delta Vacations. I think we have, you know, for like standing years running that we've been live, a KHM has the most agents at the event. And that says a lot of how we, you know, how we keep that partnership going. But I think again, it's when we talk about, you know, what's best for you. So what are you budgeting for? Delta vacation is a big bang for the buck because my registration also includes my air. It doesn't include my hotel, but it includes my air. So, you know, there's something that is also figured into that. And, you know, it bounces back between Minnesota and Atlanta. So that's great to get those two things. And I actually, we did Detroit. They did Detroit one year too for, for a big hub. So, you know, it also does move around. So even if you want to learn a little bit about the local destination, you have that there too. But, you know, being able to meet different agents, different other KHM agents from around the way, meet up with a travel tribe, find your, your, your KHM twin who you can bounce ideas off of and, and grow those relationships with. But it's just a strong force that we get there. And just the education parts that you get are just unbelievable um, with the, you know, they do a great thing with groups and, you know, I don't know, I'm, Groups is my thing. I just love it. Um, but, you know, the social media, the destination aspect itself, that's the one thing I love. And the handouts you get, I just wanted to go to each class that even I wasn't in just to get their handouts so I would have information on the destination because the handouts are amazing. Well, and I think we brought this up, up yesterday when we were kind of talking through this is having that buddy yeah. that you, you pick schedules so that you're going to get those pieces from them and you can share materials. Um, so you, you, you can cover more ground. Let's talk about the big ones now. Of course, we, we were, you know, we were at ASTA a couple weeks ago, hands down was a great event, very educational, great for networking. Our travel consortia is TLN. They have Travel Leaders Network. They've got Edge coming up here um, in a, is that next summer? I can't remember. Yes. Is that next it's, summer? It's in the next few weeks. Uh, Chantel and Richard are going. Yeah, because yep. yes. yep. I feel, yes, you're right, because it used to be in May, and I think they've switched it, so it's at Universal. Right. Um, what do you think about that event? If I can kick it on the Edge Conference, um, you know, geared toward Travel Leaders Networks products, right? What does Travel Leaders Networks as a consortia offer us? And then they're delving into all of those different products that they offer us. Uh, some that we uh, subscribe to from KHM's perspective and some that we don't. But it really delves into those products that have a lot of benefit. The engagement program, uh, the cruise program that they offer, um, all, those, all those different things that they have, that's what that conference is about. It's and a great way to you get a little confusing, right? Is because sometimes you'll be hearing about products and you'll be like, wait a second, we do don't. we have that? You know, and then it causes, yes. you know, like, wait a second, why aren't I using that? But it's not something that KHM subscribes to. So that that's the part that can get a little confusing. Marie? It's a great way to learn how to maximize our relationship with travel leaders on the products that they have that we do subscribe to. Because I know a lot of agents after they have gone to um, the edge come back and like, I had no idea that I could do this with um, the marketing program. I had no idea that we could, you know, with engagement, what we could do with that. So then they get engaged in that and to go on, or I didn't know they had, you know, all this training on their website for all, you know, X, Y, Z, or I didn't know they had talking points. I have PR material written for me if someone calls me and asks me to give my perspective in the media. So, you know, it, it really opens your eyes to what KHM for relationship with TLN is and how you can maximize your, you know, relationship with us and TLN into your agency. They have a great trade show time. too. 
Oh, yeah, they do. Uh, yeah, they do. A lot of times they will have tracks. So mm -hmm. there'll, there'll be sessions that are for uh, less experienced agents, more experienced agents. What I've really liked about a lot of the uh, EDGE conferences is their business course. Um, they really have some great business courses that have helped me understand more about the business. Very good. All right, so one that I feel like is this big enigma because I've never been, I haven't heard a whole lot about it is, is the Travel Agent Forum that's coming up in Las Vegas. I know we have some agents presenting at that. What is this about? Why would I want to go? Go ahead, Marie. I, I have not been to the Travel Agent Forum. I know that Rick is going, Anita and Craig are going. Uh, Rick, Anita, and, and Craig are going. I have not been to the Travel Agent Forum, but again, it's one of those at home. So I think Northstar puts that on as well. So again, it's uh -huh. it's operated by a, um, a media outlet type thing. So it was like the Luxury Travel Expo and such like that, which I have spoken at. Um, it, again, you're getting great all-in-all -all education. They do gear some things more to the independent agent or an agency yeah. type deal. So you're you're getting some things that you don't normally get other places. But again, there's going to be some services there from those people who are speaking um, that you know you may you know want to partake in. So you know I, I do think you know you get education plus you know more products offered that could help you benefit your agency and lessen you know your load so um, I, I think it's a great opportunity again for networking we send you know when things end up in vegas there's always a ton of people that go to vegas yeah, yeah. and it's really, that's how it's i feel not, about universal studios it's not destination focus it's more focus yeah. on business i just got a little message from one of the people that are going in and um that that's really what it's focused it's not destination focused similar to delta u it's more focused on your business and you're right marie it is independent contractor oriented okay i think we have so, this this year we have 70 some agents going already i mean it's gonna be awesome. amazing yes. wow wow yeah. i think travel agent at home the travel agent um I, we've always had lots of ic engagement for those so um because again, like what Bill just said, it does focus on the business itself. So right. you're getting that type of relationship. And if again, if you're at somewhere and you can schedule one-on-one -on -one sessions with suppliers and vendors to talk about product, take advantage of that. True. So Wanda, you were so kind to bring to me, to my attention, some of the events that focus more on some of our diverse populations uh, the Black Travel Summit, Black Travel Expo, Latino Travel Fest, WTM Latin America, IGLTA, which we did have Stephanie on, who's a, a board member a few months ago. What, what's, what's the goal of these events? Well, I think if you think about demographic, who is my niche? Whom am I servicing? Who, am I, who is my client? So as you think about um, who you're marketing to, the best place to put your marketing dollars is to your demographic, to whom your particular client is. You need to know whom you're speaking to. You need to have a client avatar. You could have multiple, but you need to have at least a main client avatar. And these particular um, offerings give you an opportunity to hone in on those segments that you may be um, focused on. Um, you know, I think about, you know, too busy not to travel example, our focus is on um, the woman of color over the age of 40. Um, but that's not the only party I serve. I service parties across the spectrum, but in a cultural scenario, we all do things just a little different. Some of us want to do, um, you know, mountain hiking. Some of us don't. So, you know, everybody has a preference. We'll put it that way. So culturally, there are some things that are more important to the culture that you may be focused on than it is to the broader masses. So by going to these particular segments, uh, these particular um, conventions, you get a little more of the statistics, a little more of the specifics of what that niche is looking for and where they are today as a current state and where they may be going um, as a target state um, for the future. But of course, in any of the ones we've talked about, I think as Marie uh, pointed out earlier, the key across the board um, for going to any of these is really budgeting and making sure that it makes sense for the dollars that you have for your business. It has to be a good business strategy on which of these you go to and have a 
clear understanding of what you're trying to gain. As Bill made reference to uh, the travel agent form being very business related. Um, it just depends on what you're looking for, but those are more, um, uh, I guess, tunneled into a view of what that particular segment of the travel market um, is doing today and where they're going for tomorrow and how your business may need to be modified and changed as far as your marketing strategy, et cetera. So oh, I think it's so interesting because, you know, we had a little bit of a discussion yesterday and I know this was brought up, um, you know, several weeks ago in the show, probably sometime in May, how we can all tend to put our clients in a box. And we do that based on so many different, you know, characteristics that we, that we, you know, give them and, or that they possess. And some of these conferences, it sounds like from, from your perspective, help us pull our clients out of that box and say, Absolutely. you know what, here's what Latino people across the country love to do. Here's what African-American people across the country love to do. It is not a one size fits all. It is not. It is not. Everyone, everyone, you have to ask the questions, right? We've always said this. You have to ask the questions to find out where the interest is. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. I mean, if you think about the fact that we are all ICs and we're running our own business, if you think about the banks of the world, the targets of the world, the retailers and in, in, in just, they all do their market research. They all know which um, culture, which ethnicity, et cetera, is doing what at this particular time. I know when I was um, previously in management roles in the bank, at one particular point, there was a very big push for um, the Latino and Hispanic segment because they had the statistics on where the dollars were growing and going during a particular um, period of time. And so as owners of our own businesses, we need to be cognizant of that and realize that we cannot put everybody in a box, that the multitude of clients that we may be servicing each of them may have different preferences based on their sociological, economical, as well as their cultural preferences. Love it. All right, so at the end of the day, you guys, if there was one takeaway for an agent that we wanted them to get value and return on their investment. Um, oh, and before I ask you that question, I do wanna say, Marie, you brought up a really good point. For a lot of these events, not all of them, there are scholarship opportunities. Mm -hmm. Good point. So it's really point. important to dig into that and see if there are opportunities to attend for free or at a discounted rate. So just because you see XYZ on the screen, dig a little deeper for those opportunities. Um, but anyways, if there was one event that you felt a, an agent would get their most bang for their buck, what would you say? Gosh. Uh, or did you, That's maybe hard. it's not an agent, maybe it's which one did you feel you got your most bang for buck? Yeah, when I was first starting out, I think for me trying, you know, I needed to understand the cruise market. So cruise world for me was humongous. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a great bang for the buck. I got to, to meet the different cruise lines. I got to, to, you know, meet different BDMs, even talk to our, you know, meet our BDMs. Um, and it just, it gave me that insight to what I was missing because I didn't understand the cruiser. I thought cruising people were stupid. Um, like you, you go to on a cruise ship and you get off with it because like in 2012, beverage packages weren't even a thing yet. I'm like, you paid 2500 $2, to go on a cruise and your blood was 7000 What the heck? <laughs> I'm going to go to my all-inclusive for 2500 get a butler and have no bar bill. So, and then I'm, on the cruise, I'm like, why do you go to an all-inclusive? like, I can do this all on a ship and I get to see different beaches all the time. So it gave me a different perspective that I didn't have. Um, and also too, you know, you know, clients in boxes, you know, as our clients, you know, take on, you know, if they trust us their tastes are going to change our tastes change and we have to learn to grow our education our, and continue that education so we can grow our clients out of this little box and into different and into different places because their tastes are going to change and we've seen a lot of our a lot of agents start you know they started here and they would they you'd never see them anything but the summit and now they're going to different things because their clients are growing and they're at luxury travel expos and they're they're you know they're they're applying for gtm and things like that so uh you know what you know get that budget together 
go out to truly learn, buddy up with somebody, because one, it's going to cut your costs too, if you can find someone to share a room with, and then, you know, make your agendas together. Okay, you go there, I'll go here, because sometimes the tracks are at the same time, and there are two great subjects that you want to do, and luckily some of mine, Bill, were teaching, so I'm like, I'm just going to ask Bill, hey, what, what did you guys talk about? Because I wanted to go there, but I, I went here, so um, you can tag team on that type of thing too, but um, it's, you know, where, you know, if you're starting out, where is your lag at? I think you, we have the best opportunities to minimize what we're spending with, you know, the STAR program, with DVU because we have the air included, you get so much. You get so much from those two um, land and cruise side um, going. But I just I I can will never stop learning. I learn something every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. VA. I think that's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> um, <laughs> it it depends on where an agent is at any given year. Uh, what their needs are. I know if you're changing, say you've always done all inclusives and you want to go over to river cruising, then you may want to look at um, Delta Vacations or you may want to look at ASTA. Um, if you're really want to, wanting to focus in on your business, ASTA has some good courses. Uh, Travel Leaders has some great courses. I think it really depends on where you are. For me personally, I have not been to Delta University and now I want to go. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I would really like to get that destination training. Mm -hmm. um, but I've always loved the ASTA conference. Um, I've done the global conference for many years and this coming year I'm going to the River Cruise Expo. So, um, but they have some great events with great information for agents. Wanda. Uh, I have to say uh, with Virginia, that's a tough one to answer. You know, my being a business head as I am, um, it's all about what makes sense based on my strategy for the year, as far as to where I'm going to go. Um, but at the same time, I will say that for those that I have been to, I've enjoyed them all. But from a global perspective, I think ASTA was probably my favorite uh, because I, I think I got a little bit of everything. I got some destination. I got some real good um, compliance. I think one of the courses that I sat in, Rick was sitting right next to me where we did a um, legal compliance class. And it was just so um, enthralling. I mean, see if legalese is enthralling, but it really was. It was some really good information <laughs> that was being provided. Um, so I, I, I guess I would have to say ask. And then I also met people that felt like they were from all over the world um, that came to the sessions as well. So it was really good. Awesome. Bill. I became a better travel agent when I went to Delta U. It was called MLT University at the time. Um, I became a better travel agent at Delta U because I felt a little more well-rounded. I became a very passionate and excellent travel agent when I did in-destination Hawaii training. <clears throat> Every single island, including Lanai and Molokai, I've been, put myself there, like Marie says, could I afford it? I couldn't afford not to go because my Hawaii business grew exponentially after that. I became a better business person at ASTA Global Convention and with the other ASTA aspects that we're involved in. Love it. You guys, thank you so much for taking the time. It was almost a blessing in disguise that, that Luca couldn't join us today simply because we had more time to talk about this really important topic. I feel like everyone um, got a really great overview. So thank you so much for being here, you guys. Um, but, but I have to say, I learned more today by listening to Lawrence <laughs> talk about that ship. That was amazing. Just his buzzwords that he said today, Carolyn, yes. were unbelievable. I wrote them all down. But I also learned the most from Virginia, who told me I had no idea that the rail tracks on that railroad were the same as the commercial railroad tracks. And all I can think about is her bouncing off of those. The, and clackety, clackety, clack. I don't know if I can do that, but I learned a lot from that today. <laughs> Yes. Well, and, and one thing you do have to know is that Virginia's husband, John, does not have the best hearing. So if <laughs> that bothered him with the honking of the, the horn, horn, I Crazy. can't believe it didn't bother UVA. I think you just tuned it out, but I it's, think I it's tuned something it out. to keep in mind. Yep. <laughs> All right, you guys, thank you so much for being here. You guys, our final segment today, and thanks for hanging in there with us. We've gone long. 
but that's all right. It's National Linguini Day, and our KHM at Home segment is sponsored by Celebrity Cruise Line, sailing beyond your borders and expanding your horizons. So I have put myself back into the kitchen to make pasta agliolio for you. I'm probably butchering that name as well, but this is like my go-to dish because I don't know, you guys, I have teenagers, and sometimes when I cook dinner, I'm not sure how many people are going to come in the door. You know, it could be it could be the four of us, it could be eight people. And so this feeds a feeds a, a whole host of people because it's literally pasta, garlic, olive oil. So that's it. Throw in a salad and you're good to go. So the web the recipe for this will be posted um, on YouTube and on uh, khmtoday.com, and the video we posted so you guys can can take a look at that as well. It was very fun to make and equally as yummy. So. Thank you to Gi Giada De Laurentiis for that recipe. And thank you to all of our guests today. Thank you to, um, who else are we thanking? Oh, our show sponsors, Apple Leisure Group. Uh, our segment sponsors, Disney Destinations, Southwest Vacations, United Vacations, Regent Seven Seas, and Celebrity Clu Cruise Line. Next week, you guys, <laughs> this is crazy. It's National Hobbit Day. So, you know, who knows, who knows what will be planned. So I will see you next week. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.